Metrics are definitely the most underused component of Power BI. It always astounds me how few people actually ever use them, even look at them. And yeah, Microsoft keeps making them better. They've got a lot better recently. You have access now to the model. So let's have a look and see and what's been added recently by Microsoft. Welcome along. My name's Ross, the creator and founder of Geordie Consulting and Geordie Intelligence, the YouTube channel you're watching now. What we've got here is the metrics page. Okay, now these things are absolutely phenomenal. The more I use them, the better they seem. Okay, and these things just do not let you down. They run really well and constantly for you. Our England food hygiene one is one that's been running for a couple of years now. And it just, every day, it takes a snapshot as our report pack updates, and it allows us to track things over time. Now, this is a simple spreadsheet, but all of a sudden, we've got a view that you wouldn't get without putting in place proper data warehousing stuff to really see over time what the values are. So if we look, for example, at the food hygiene for the Northeast, we can see it broken down day by day, exactly what's happened. We can zoom into a particular area and see specifically what's happened. We can see it comes all the way up to today. We can bring in target values if we've got targets as well to show for it. There's lots we can do. And even better, we've got some check-in options. And I'll put a link as well. For you go and see the video we've talked about putting these in and creating a power-up that allowed you to do this whole process and have it all automated and sending out reminders for people to go and check in our values. And we'll not talk about that now. So we've got that. So what's changed? What's happened is that now we actually have access to a semantic model for it. Okay, so we've got our main semantic model, the food hygiene report. We've also got this England food hygiene semantic model. And that's the model from the metrics. Simply put, it's like any other Power BI report. So what we have to do though, we can't actually go and download the original source file because it's been built in the service, which is annoying. But what we can do is we can connect to it. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna say, let's get some data from a Power BI service model. I'm gonna pick the England Food Hygiene, we're gonna to connect to it, and all of a sudden we've got our values. Okay? It's not the most intuitive of things, and obviously, if you think through what we've got, R1 is a bit difficult because we've got different things. But if we bring in value and we bring in, let's say, let's, unfortunately, we don't have a proper calendar table with this, so we're just going to have to bring this in. Um, and you have to deal with the hierarchies. I'm not going to get rid of it yet. But what we can do is we drill down, we get to our daily view. There you go, but this is everything, okay? And this is a total of all our values, okay? So what we need to do is go to our goals, and what we can do with this is I'm going to bring through a value of a goal. And I'm going to place it just here, and I'm going to bring it to basic filtering. There we go. Okay, and what we want, or in name, let's go to the average hygiene in the northeast. We can suddenly see we get the values that we've got before. Okay, and of course, yes, we could zoom up to that, and we get something else. Um, we'd need to change it from sum to be the average, of course, wouldn't we? Okay, so we can get to that point where we can clearly see everything that's going on and track over time what's happening with our goals. And then because this is in here, we could drop this, bring it into, um, you know, save this up. We could bring this into PowerPoint. We could then start to piece together what's going on. There's an awful lot of capability that suddenly becomes available because we've been able to drop in and bring our metrics knowledge that we've that we've built into this. You could bring this into a new Power BI report, couldn't you? So you could go create a new PBIX file, or we could even say, right, we're going to bring this in. Remember, make a hybrid model. So if you've gone through and pieced together the historic values to then say, well, we're now from day X, tracking it properly, you've got your historic comes through, you've got your proper goes forward, it will work for you, and you can piece together everything that you need to do and everything that you want this way. 
Now, because we've got this and we've got the metrics all automatically tracking, we can also do things like we can put in the status. So we've got the status of these. So we can say, well, um, you know, we could put in a, we could color it by status. There's so many options that we can do. And the more I looked at this, I was like, wow, what can we do with this? This is amazing. So here's an example of something that I've built already using these metrics. We can, we've pieced together this thing, pulling through small chart versions of all the businesses or sort of all the regions that we've got. So we've got this presented just boom, straight away, really quickly and easily. And it's obvious then as well, because these are all relative because it's, because it's a small multiple, it's the same axis. So the Y axis is the same. So we know London's got way more businesses than the Northeast. We can look at the hygiene ratings. We can see all the different areas that we've got. What's obvious is that we haven't been consistent with how we name things. We need to go back through and rename these, of course, but that makes sense. That's not difficult to do. You can suddenly expand this out because I could say, well, I'm going to take this, I'm going to place this into one of my Power BI, this or into one of my PowerPoints for my executive team. They can see these sorts of things. You can bring in scorecard elements as well directly into any Power BI report. So if we went back to a new report, goals as a list, browse them, we can then drop in the goals from here. Okay. So we've always been able to do, or well not always, we've been able to do this for a while. But again, it's that interface, isn't it? That great, I can see it. I can see the goals. I can see what's going on. But it's not quite the same, is it? Okay, and that's where the ability to connect the model up, build the content that you need, structure it, format it, make it look exactly how you need it to look in your business. Put the color schemes right for it as well, for example. So we've got this ability now, haven't we? If we go back to this report, we can now see what our page two looks like and our page one. So we can kind of see metrics are just straight away in there. And the thing to remember, and this is one of the, this is, as if we go back to the metrics here, I haven't done anything with these really in years since we put this together. We did the work, we did, we set these all up. There's nothing being done. This just tracks and goes through. And if we go in and we say, let's edit what these do, we can go to the northeast, we can hit the edit button, edit this goal. We can see it's got a current value which comes from the data set. In terms of this, 4.72, and we've just pulled through and it's just you pick a report and you say, well, filter it down to this and you do that and it say this is what it's tagged to. See, it's linked to something. We could link a target to as well, but I've just hard coded a target. We could have defined a parameter or a variable that was going to be this is what this is going to be. And that would always be in our model and we could then use that. And if we change it in one place, it would change for all of these. And then because we've got that, what we can do is we can, we've written some logic in here. We choose to update these rules. Click this, update rules. You can see it says if it's not over 4.6, yeah, so if it's greater than 4.6, show it's on track. Otherwise, it's at risk. But you could do different conditions. We can do lots of these. You can add multiple conditions to them. So we could say something that starts at a certain date. If it's not there, it's this. You can do so much with these and then leave them. And that's the most important thing. When you first set up your metrics, they're blank. You just have one data point for them, don't you? Okay, so in a lot of ways, it's like AI. You got one data point, it's not worth it. And it's always gonna be its worst on day one. Day two, suddenly you've got two data points. It's going up or it's going down. Day three, you start to see a bit more of day four, five, six, seven. Until eventually you get to the point that we are at now, the map here, hit cancel on this, where if I click on this, I can see there's so much information here even just hovering over it, I can see it's taken a big tumble that recently dropped. Okay, we can see what's going on all over really quickly, really easily, really simply. So from a management perspective, I just go through and say, what's at risk? And it shows me what's at risk. You see London, we've got a basic hygiene of 4.44. Do we need to intervene? Is there something we need to do there? And that then becomes where 
these other reports become more important. So we know London is the most businesses potentially. And again, this is where our data set fails. We would need to have, should we have food standard offices, number of offices that we would report? What's the headcount looking like by local authority? Is it that they're overwhelmed? What's the percentage of restaurants or food establishments per agent that we've got? To then be able to say, well, London clearly has the most with 60, with nearly 70,000 businesses, yet it's definitely the lowest with 4.2, 4.4. But it's coming up, isn't it? You can see it's gone down, but now it's definitely starting to come up. So we've got this view where suddenly we can start to be an awful lot more clever about what it is we're doing and how we access and interact with our data. And this is where context becomes important because all of a sudden, I've got access to levels of context that are right at my fingertips without having to do an awful lot of work. I've set up the metrics, I've left them running, we've gone through, we've built the Power App that allows someone to go through and add comments to it. It sends out a note, so you need to put in a um, comment is due. We can do that around on a monthly basis so that then the PowerPoint deck that we prepare and we send to our leadership team somebody can go through and see, or do we put the, this view in where they can then say, say, all right, okay, I'm gonna click on here and see, oh, these are the check-in points. If an issue with takeaways in particular, all right, we can start to do things and be data-driven. So what do you reckon then? There's an awful lot with metrics and the way that they work and the way that it runs. And it is one of those things that, if you just look, we've got a data point on its own, yay. I don't understand. For you guys in your businesses, mate, metrics are well worth getting involved with, okay? Go experiment, have a look at them. The ability, if you think, with this food hygiene data set, it is simply, it is a, it's a live read of the various spreadsheets for each local authority that they produce every day. And it reads them through, produces the data set, now we've got ready to go. There's no historic trending to it. This metric suddenly allows us to have that historic trending, we can see. Now in real world terms, would I get a benefit from being able to go back in time and see, well, what was the food hygiene standard in this area historically? Yes, I would from here, but not from in terms of being able to go and see the different restaurants or, re or food establishments and see, watch them change if you have time. You know, it'd be nice to do, but it's not going to be a big winner from the business perspective because why would I want to go back in time and see, well, that one was a one, now it's a five. Does that help? drive the business narrative. I don't think it does. But knowing that different things are here makes a big difference. You can go through with this as well, and because of the nature of it and the way it pieces together, you can actually go in and build up way more. So you could have over a thousand metrics if you really wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it, but you saw there's a hierarchy to them. So we've got the, the We've gone through, we've broken down the local authorities by region. We could have under each region, we could have the local authority listed. So you could see that level as well, both for number of businesses and for hygiene. We could also do it by establishment type. And so we could go through and have like the establishment types. So we'd, whether it's like a restaurant and then have those underneath restaurant for, by region and then so forth, if you really wanted to. There's not a problem with doing it. It, yes, it takes time initially setting it up. It, don't get me wrong, yeah, it takes time. But once you get it done, it's done and it just runs and it just tick, 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 runs away. And it doesn't turn around and go, oh, we need to do something about it. It just goes forward, forward, forward. So we, there's ways, isn't there? There's suddenly it becomes really clear we can do lots with this and it's not going to take me a lot of time and effort. You're going to use them? I think you should. If you need help getting these to work for you, get in touch with Geordie Consulting. There's a link down below and we'll put the QR code up there if you want to book a meeting. Click the link, scan the QR code, book a meeting. They'll start, that, start your journey, help you to implement the metrics you need, and then help you serve up the report packs that your business needs to really drive itself forward and be more data-driven. For now though, Stay safe, take care, ta-da.